So we're group Pikachu and we're doing a presentation on Mukito, the Emperor Meiji of Japan. So Mutsuhito was born during the late Edo period when the Bakumatsu period, which was in the 1850s. He was born into the royal family and he was the son of the emperor, but this wasn't such a prestigious position. Although it was quite comfortable, it was not a position of real power as the power during that time was still held by the Tokugawa shogun. And we can see the samurai in the image the samurai were the real source of power during the Edo period, not the royal family. So during this time before the Meiji period, it was the late Edo period and Japan was still a feudal state and it was controlled by the shogunate. And although the US and most of Europe was modernized, Japan was different. It was not industrialized and it wasn't an empire. It was just a small isolated country. And, and you can see in the picture, just a couple of peasant Japanese people. However, this was all going to change once the door of Japan was opened by Matthew Perry and the US in the late 1850s. 1960s. Um, this would expose Japan to more Western technology, additionally from the earlier Dutch learning, and it exposed the, the more Westernized ideals as well. And it also weakened the control of the Shogun as it was shown that he had bowed to the Western pressures instead of maintaining his own control over the country. We can see in the picture a woodblock print of Japan's ports being forcibly opened, and now all the world is just filling in. So, Mutohito was born with poor health due to inbreeding in the royal family. He was very deformed. He had, like, a curved spine, and he had problems with his health. But, little, but besides this, little is known about his early life. And he was declared crown prince and heir in 1860. And you can just see in the picture some Japanese people working on the arts, a woodblock, a woodblock print. During the beginning of the Meiji era was when Musahito became the emperor was following the death of Emperor Kome in February 1867. So Mutsuhito issued the Charter Oath and this abolished feudalism and promoted a democratic government in Japan. He also replaced the old capital of Kyoto with Edo, which became named Tokyo. And in 1889, the Meiji Constitution was created and under this constitution, now the emperor and the prime minister and the cabinet would share power, giving a lot more power actually to the emperor, although he was still subject to an actual elected government. And the image shows the Meiji emperor reading the charter oath out to parliament. So during his early reign, he was only a, fig a figurehead for the government and he mostly ignored politics and just continued his studies in classical education. But the era started to show a shift from traditional values to a more westernized view. And during the Meiji era, the legal status of women began to decline as they were denied access to the legal sphere, sphere and denied the right to vote. And you can see this image from early on in his life where he's wearing traditional Japanese clothing and he looks quite young. Once he got more control, Mitsuhito began the Meiji Restoration. And this was a time when the government seized lands and instead of the daimyos being in control, the prefectures were created. The samurai clash was abolished and the shogunate lost all power 
was no longer anything to do with the shogun. It was only the parliament and also the emperor. The country became more modernized. It became more westernized. And they created public schools, public systems of bureaucracy that were similar to the Western model, and also adopted styles of dress sometimes that were similar to the Western model, as we can see in the picture of a more mature Meiji emperor dressed in this militarized garb, which is also very Western influenced. We can also see during the Meiji period, just this rapid change in technology that really opened Japan up to this new way of thinking as seen in this woodblock print. So, so state Shintoism began in the Meiji era and when it merged with patriotism, patriotism and religion and turned loyalty to the emperor into a religious cult. And the emperor was not just a political figure. He was also a deified being because the emperor was believed to be a descendant of Amaterasu, the sun god, in Shinto beliefs. So worship was turned into a ritual system of civil control and state-controlled shrines formed a bureaucracy for the government. And you can see in this picture just a shrine with soldiers in front of it. During the early Meiji era, the emperor's face wasn't as well known. He wasn't really a public figure, but as the era continued, it became more important for this figurehead and this head of the government to become more of a well-known person within Japan to really enforce this cult that had surrounded him. So people began, the government began to circulate his more westernized public image into every home, and additionally to spread the Jingu Taima, which is shown in the image, the emperor's seal, and this was to be placed in every home in Japan. So the, the emperor was involved in increasing the sphere of Japan's influence, and as the Meiji era saw the birth of Japanese imperialism, the Japanese expanded conscription and began to maintain a Western style military. As you can see from this picture, you can see during the Meiji era, they expanded into Korea and later into Manchuria, but that did not happen yet. Also during this time, Japan began to participate in more international wars. It participated in the World War I, but not heavily, more of just seizing some islands. But it also participated in the Russo-Japanese War and the Sino-Japanese War. These were the wars where Japan really showed that it could compete with these major powers. It was really a force to be reckoned with, with its new Western-style heavy military. And also Korea, as mentioned, was annexed during this time, and Japan would maintain its control over Korea until the end of World War II. So you can see from this picture the new style of Japanese military, this imperialist force, the imperial flag of Japan. And also a woodblock print depicting Japanese forces, again with the imperial flag, these strong military power, which was really a focus during the Meiji era. So at the end of the Meiji era, the, it ended when the emperor died in 1912 of Giremia. And after Mitsuhiro's death, he was declared the Meiji er emperor. And this started the trend of every emperor being named after their era. And so his death marked the end of the Meiji era and began the Taisho period. And you can see this is a picture of the emperor's funeral procession. And this is just another picture of the funeral. 
So even though the Meiji era ended, it continued to exert a lot of power over the way Japan would develop into the 20th century, the 21st century, even to some extent. Japan began its imperial phase under the Meiji Emperor. Previously, it had just been a little feudal kingdom, but now it was a serious, modernized imperial power. It was a world power. And because of this legacy of enforced patriotism and nationalism, the Meiji era contributed to this policy of expansionism and Japanese nationalism, which would be really focused in World War II.